Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker, and today I'm teaching you how to set up and connect with your Cricut Venture large format cutting machine. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 1, and we're going to set up our Cricut Venture machines together, step by step. So please pull up a chair here in my craft room. I've got lots of space, and let's get started. So the Cricut Venture is a large format cut computer guided cutting machine that cuts more than uh, 300 different materials, I'm sorry, 100 different materials, everything from vinyl and paper to things like, you know, little thicker things like poster board and cool stuff like that. The Venture can do everything that a Cricut Explorer can do, but it's all bigger and faster. That's the easiest way to think about it. It's a Cricut Explorer on steroids, all right? The Venture can use materials that are 13 inches or 25 inches wide with or without a machine mat. It can even go smaller if you use a mat, right? So, but it can go as wide as 25 inches. Uh, but you don't need to dedicate an entire room to the Cricut Venture because it's tilted at 45 degrees, right? So let me show you, I've got my Venture set up right here. It's tilted at 45 degrees. And so this 45 degree design um, creates this awesome, it like packs a huge work area into smaller than you would think, right? This is really cool. Um, and of course, the Cricut Venture is wider than a normal Cricut due to the larger material options for it. So you can see it here. It's wider, right? So you have to make sure that you have enough room side to side for it, right? It does take up more room. Now, the Venture is the fastest Cricut ever. Uh, so that would make it like, you know, I guess it's a debate about whether about whether it's the best Cricut because the Cricut Maker 3 can cut more materials than the, than the Venture can cut less because it's more like an Explorer, but it is so fast. It, it's amazing how fast it is. The first time I saw it cut, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like blink and you miss it. Like seriously, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, I actually, the first time I tried to like I tried to, the very first test cut I ever did, I tried to get on video and it was so fast, I couldn't actually record it fast enough and had to redo it. So seriously, it was blink and you miss it. Um, so in addition to doing really big cuts, so it can cut, draw, score, and foil faster and bigger than ever. It can also cut around huge print thin cut designs perfectly just as fast. So here is my Cricut Venture cutting machine. I'm going to show you how to set it up, do a test cut, and explain how to maintain the Venture. My goal is to get you set up and able to cut on your Venture by the end of this class. It's really easy and you can totally do it. Now I have something I made for you, a free printable handbook that goes along with these lessons. You can download it right now at cricutkickoff.com. Um, just register for the class, which is free, and you'll get the handbook. I'll be referring to it as we go along during today's lesson. And one more thing, which I always remind everybody, and it's very important, I want you to know that you are not alone. You might be the only person who's interested in a cricket in your friends or family circle, um, but I am here to help. I know cricket, I love cricket, as is my amazing team and my awesome community of more than a million cricket crafters. So you are among friends here. So hang out here with us in our studio, take notes in your handbook as we go along. If you get stuck, reach out and ask. I love to help, as does every member of my team and my community. We are always here to help you succeed. And I truly, truly mean that. Nothing brings me more joy than seeing you make things that I helped you make, that what makes you happy. If something that you made makes you happy, it makes me happy too, okay? So ready to start? This is a big box. Look how big this is. All right, so, and also I want everyone to know, I decided <laughs> this is too big to set up live because I, it's just, it's very, it's very big. So that that is the truth. So. I prepared a video to show you, so I'm gonna play the video. It's gonna be a lot less awkward, and I think it's, it's even better than me doing it live. But when the video is done, I'm gonna answer all your questions. So save up your questions for me, okay? Ready? Let's do it. Now the Cricut Venture comes in a massive but well-packed box. Before you open it, make sure you have a table or counter with about 34 by 42 inches of free space ready to place it on. In the back here is a tidy little box and inside you'll find the quick start guide, 
a user guide, and warranty information. Note that the user guide has a handy diagram of all the parts of the venture. Refer to this if you get stuck and can't find a specific part that I mentioned in this video. Also in the box are these roll support brackets. These help support vinyl rolls if you didn't get the docking stand, which does not come with the Cricut Venture unless you order it, and I highly recommend a docking stand, but you don't have to have it either. There's also a little cleaning kit. You'll want to do a little cleaning every once in a while, more on that later. And the power and USB cables. There's both a USB-C as well as a USB-A adapter in here, which is nice. A new performance blade and housing are already in the Cricut Venture in Clamp B. The performance blade is specially designed to withstand the high speeds of the Cricut Venture. Lift the Venture out of the box and note that it weighs over 40 pounds, so be careful. You'll see another box in the bottom. This box has a mat support extension in it for really big mats. There's also a roll of material for your first cuts in here. In my roll, I had about 30 inches of black removable smart vinyl and six feet of white removable smart vinyl. If you're unfamiliar with smart vinyl, that's Cricut's brand of vinyl that can go in your cutting machine without needing any machine mat. So now we head to our computer to start setup. Go to cricut.com slash setup to get started. Just choose cutting machine, then venture. You'll be directed to download Cricut Design Space, which is totally free. Just open up Cricut Design Space, go to the menu in the upper left corner and choose new product setup. Then choose smart cutting machine and select Cricut Venture. The first step is to place the Cricut Venture flush with the edge of a sturdy table or counter. It's fine to use your kitchen counter or dining room table if that's what you have. Cricut designed it with this in mind, in fact. You'll want the edge of your machine to be aligned with the edge of your surface, like I've placed it here. Putting it on the edge like this is necessary so your materials and mats can feed smoothly without needing a lot of space. This is one of the cool features of the Cricut Venture. Note that if you got the docking stand, this is a great time to set it up and put your Cricut Venture on it. Setup is really simple. There is a super easy to follow directions included with it. It only took me about 10 minutes to assemble it and get it ready to go. Just make sure that your wheels are locked when you put your Venture on it. And also make sure the Venture is seated securely on the docking posts on top of the stand. Now lift the lever, which is the big silver handle on the left side of your machine, and remove all of the protective packaging. Even this bit here under the assembly arm on the rail, which I totally overlooked and didn't remove until later, so I'm telling you now so you don't make the same mistake. Next, insert the fixed and adjustable supports into slots behind your machine if you're not using the docking stand. If you do have a docking stand, there are built-in roller supports on the stand itself, and you can just put these back in the box. Place the manual trimmer cutoff tool in the top left pocket. I love this little thing. Then plug in your power adapter, plug the other end into an outlet or a power strip, and turn on your Cricut Venture. The next step is to connect your machine to your computer, which you can do either through Bluetooth or USB. If you can manage USB, I recommend you use it as that will mean a faster and more stable connection. You can get USB extension cords for about $10 so your cable can reach your computer, which is what I use and it works really well. If USB is not an option, open your Bluetooth settings and connect to the Venture. Once Cricut Design Space detects that the Venture is connected, you'll be able to proceed to the next step and click continue. If you have any issues connecting, make sure everything is connected and if you're using Bluetooth, make sure that your computer or your device is within 10 to 15 feet of the machine. Cricut Design Space will then update the Venture with the latest and greatest features, so be sure you stay connected and powered on while that happens. After it's updated, it'll be all set and ready for your first test cut. To do this, locate the black vinyl that came in your box. Then raise the lever on your Cricut Venture. Now slide the pinch roller to position one like this. Lift the guides on the left side and the middle like this. 
and then insert your vinyl in under the top guides. Push it in until it gets to the bottom edge of the machine. Once the Cricut Venture detects that it's in, you'll hear the vacuum system whir to life and keep the vinyl in place. Now just lower this lever. This step is really easy to forget when you're first learning, so don't forget to lower the lever and make sure your blade is in clamp B, which is where it should be if you just unboxed it. It's already there when it comes, right? Then press the load button, which should be flashing right now. It's the button with two arrows on it. Once you do that, the material will load into the machine and it'll confirm that you have enough of it. So it'll just make sure there's enough for your cut. And then the middle go button will begin to flash. Press that to begin the cut. And that's it, right? Isn't that cool? So once the cut is complete, it won't take very long on the venture. It'll be super fast, in fact. Your next step is to trim it from the rest of the vinyl. Take the manual trimmer tool from its pocket in the top left of the machine and place it in the cutoff groove near the bottom of the machine, right here. Make sure the blade side is, of the tool is against your vinyl and then slide it along the groove and it'll trim your vinyl in a nice straight line. There's also an auto cutoff tool that you can put into clamp A instead, which will just cut your project off automatically after it finishes cutting. It is so cool. Your cut is now complete. Unload your vinyl by lifting up on the handle and pull the vinyl out and that's it. You can now weed the unneeded pieces from the design that you just cut and you have a cool Cricut sticker to put wherever you want. I mentioned the cleaning kit that comes with your venture. Your commercial grade machine does require some regular cleaning about once every 100 cut hours or so. So not like real hours, but you know, the time that your machine is spent cutting every 100 cut hours or so. Now there are three places that you need to keep clean and one place is more important than the others. And that's the rail groove right here. Keep an eye on it. And if it starts getting dirty before 100 cut hours, clean it earlier. All right. Also make sure that this roller here and these sensors are clean and don't have any debris on or in them. To clean the top rail, get the microfiber towel from your cleaning kit. It came in your box. Wet it with rubbing alcohol and put it on the rail and then click this white piece into position on top of it. Then you just move it back and forth along the rail guide to clean it. Then you can take it off and use the same towel on the sensor windows. You use the little brush that came with your venture to clean the drive rollers here. And Cricut Design Space will tell you what to do every 100 cut hours, so don't worry if you forget. It's going to remind you. That said, if you live somewhere where you're getting more dust or debris, like you have a lot of pets, <laughs> you will probably want to clean your machine more often. So that was our Cricut adventure setup and the maintenance, which wasn't really that big of a deal, but I want, still wanted you to see that. So yeah, I saw in the chat people talking about the size of the mats. So I'm going to show you. This is that it has its own mats, of course, because it different size. So these are the smaller of the mats. There's a light grip, standard grip, and strong grip. And then there is big ones. And there's so these are just so it's so it's so amazing what you can make. I wanted to show you a project that we did um, during Merry Maker Mingle for this, but I need a moment to go find it because I forgot to get it out before the video started. But I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask Greg. So I'll just I'll ask when he comes out, and uh, and then I'll show it to you. Okay. So, but in the meantime, I would love to answer your questions. Ask me the questions about this. Uh, I think it's a real, it's really, really fast. It's really fast. It's so cool. And like I said, it does everything that Explore can do just bigger and faster. That's the easiest way to think about this. Okay. The first question, of course, and this is a very important question is how much room do you need for this machine? So Cricut recommends a workspace of, um, 35 inches by 42 and a half inches by 41 inches, right? If you can think about that. It's not considering the size of things that it can do and it can do amazing things. And it's really quite remarkable actually that it doesn't need more space. They did a great job engineering this. 
Hi, could you help me find the big stained glass, paper stained glass project so I can show them that? That's the, you know, that layered one. Thank you. Uh, so if this was not at a 45 degree angle like it is, and it was flat the way the other crickets are, it would need so much more space. So this is the only machine I've done that does this where, and the, and the mats are able to, move up and down like this, meaning you don't need all of this workspace. Because think about how much you would need if it was formatted like a regular, like explorer maker, it would be crazy. Like no one could use it unless you like, you know, worked in a school or a big, you know, like a workplace or something, right? With lots of space. So, but it can go like this. So you can put it on your island in your kitchen or the side of a table or whatever. So it's, it's intended to the intention of this, and as far as I can tell, is like for small business owners who need to cut a lot of things fast, or teachers, you know, educators who need to make big projects, stuff like that. So I've done a number of Cricut Venture projects during Merrymaker Mingle. We did two venture projects. We did a big paper stained glass project, which I hope I can show you. And uh, the Cricut Venture introduced these really cool two and a half millimeter permanent markers. And we did a really cool poster with the markers. I loved it. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. This was made on the Cricut Venture. How cool is this? Look at this, it's awesome. This is cardstock. Now most of the cardstock we got from Cricut because they sell the big cardstock since they have the Venture. But one of the colors, this orange color, is um, like we wanted another orange. So we use poster board because poster board is available in just about the right size. So isn't this beautiful? If you like this design, you can get it over at jennifermaker.com. So, Yes, so that's the Cricut Venture, it's super cool. All right, more questions. <laughs> Sandy asks about print and cut. Where do you find such a big printer? So first of all, you don't have to have the big printer if you don't need it. So, but I got one just so I could print out a um, big prints and test the print and cut. So the one that I found was on Amazon um, and it is a, I'm looking up the name because I don't remember what it was called, a Canon Image Prograph TC-20. It is a 24 inch large format printer and uh, it uses a roll of paper or it can also use sheets. So it can actually do regular size prints but it can also do big ones. And uh, it was surprisingly not as expensive as I, it was less than the Venture was. I was really surprised at how um, affordable it was. So if you're looking for one, I thought it was great. The only thing you have to be cautious of there is to get the right size paper rolls because we got the wrong size paper rolls and we had to like remove some of the paper to get it to fit. <laughs> so, but we, we still figured it out. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, Wilma says, do you recommend lowering the lever when not in use or leaving it up? Um, I don't think it really matters. I don't think it matters. I don't think that there's any, this, this lever is just, I, I don't care. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't mean I don't care. I mean, I like literally don't know if it would make a difference. So I haven't paid any attention to whether it's up or down actually. So it just, but it needs to be down for it to, it needs to be up for loading, down for cutting or, you know, whatever you're doing. Danny says, do you need special size cardstock where the mat is so big? So th this is the interesting thing about this. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't have materials that fit this. Well, technically, if you're already using a Cricut, you do. You can use all the same stuff you already have. You can do all the small stuff. You just put your smaller stuff on a smaller mat. Like you could be cutting something that's just like four by four. Right, so you can still do all the small stuff. So you don't need to have the big stuff unless that is the purpose for getting the Cricut Venture, right? It's possible that you might only wanna cut some big vinyl on it and you only need the rolls of vinyl for it and otherwise you just wanna use it like a regular size Cricut and so you just put your 12 by 12 inch cardstock onto these mats and you just use it like you normally would, right? So 
you don't have to have big cardstock, but if you want to use it, so like I said, Cricut sells big cardstock, so you can make awesome things like this. Because isn't this cool? Oh, it's on its side, sorry. Oh, now it's upside down. There we go, isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, how heavy is the Bencher? Uh, it is 34 pounds, um, I think. Check with Cricut. The, like, I don't have that number off the top of my head. So I feel like it was in the 40s. But I, I thought it was 40 something pounds. What does the box say? Does it say here? What the weight of it is? Uh, no, it doesn't say. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it is heavy though, um, but it's not as heavy as the auto press. It's still lighter than the auto press is. And you can get the stand. The stand is really cool. You don't have to have it, but I really like it because it rolls around or you can lock it, right? It's got these catch bins on the front and back. So your, your vinyl, as it goes through, just goes into these bins rather than onto the floor. There's a little hook back here for hanging your mats right back here. And it's just, it's really easy to move around when it's on the stand. We move it all around the studio all the time. Uh, Debbie says, what about the mats bending? Are they more flexible than the maker mats? I don't think they're more flexible. In fact, I think that they're thicker than the maker mats are and thicker probably means like it's more likely to break, but I don't know. I haven't any kind of stress test on them. Um, I have had one mat break. Well, it wasn't, I didn't break the mat, but a team member did and I remember that. Um, I think the larger surface area makes it easier for it to like bend, like, you know, like, cause you know, we, we bend the mat away from the cardstock and I think it's easier to over bend it, I would say. Um, but that's, that's, that's limited experience, I would say. So other than that, I haven't had an issue with the mats, other than the fact that they're very large and the large size does make them cumbersome. You get used to it, but you would need some space to work with, right? This is, this is not a machine for a crowded area. You need a little, like the, what I have here is good. I've got a flat desk to work on. The maker or the venture is right here and I can move it around as I need it. So this is good. But anything less than this, I think would be really tough. Uh, Sarah says, does it just cut vinyl and paper products? It cuts everything the Explore can cut. So it's a hundred different things, mostly cardstock and vinyl, yes. Um, but you know, there's a variety of different cardstocks and vinyls that it can do. But it is not like the maker where the, you know, the maker can cut things like crepe paper and fabric with its rotary blade and thin wood um, with its knife blade. So it cannot use the maker tools. It uses the explore type of tools. Um, the same pens that fit in the Cricut Explorers and Makers do fit into the Venture. The blades are also the same. So if you have the deep point blade or the foil transfer tip, those will fit into your Venture. Um, now it does have a special blade that comes with it called the performance blade, which is stronger and it's, in t it's um, higher, it's rated higher for the fast speeds of the Venture. So you, so my understanding is that you can still use like the blades that came with your, um, like the fine point blades that came with your explorers and makers, but they won't last as long because this is a very fast machine. It really is. Uh, 34.2 pounds. Thank you very much for <laughs> looking that up for me. The venture where it weighs 34.2 pounds. I think in my video, I said 40 pounds. So I was wrong in my video. Sorry about that. <laughs> Virginia says, is there a special way to place cardstock on the mat? I felt like I could not get it lined up correctly. So I think that larger size does make it harder to get, but I use the same method that I use for the smaller materials, which is I have my mat down on my table and I take my cardstock and I align one edge of it and then I, I place it down, right? And that allows me to get it. That said, I still remember, you know, when I was first learning it that, I struggled more with it. And I remember the mat was pretty sticky. <laughs> so I do remember, I it is it, it, there's definitely a learning curve to using the bigger mats and the bigger cardstock. But just getting that trailing edge on the edge of your grid is, is always the key to success to getting stuff like that lined up. 
Uh, where do you get the blade? I, I'm, I'm sure that Cricut.com has the blade. You would just order it from them. And I think it's also for sale on Amazon, so you could get it from them as well. Uh, Belinda asks if it cuts fabric. It cuts fabric the same way that the Cricut Explorer cuts fabric, which means that if you bond it um, and then stick it to your mat, and uh, you can get it to cut. It won't be as good, however, as the rotary blade on the maker. So I would not get this with the intention of cutting a bunch of fabric. I think that you'll be frustrated by that. You could do a little bit, right? You could do, you know, just the way that the Cricut Explore does a little bit, um, but not, I wouldn't use, I mean, as, as awesome as it sounds to use the Venture to cut out a, your, all your pattern pieces for your clothing, because that sounds really awesome. I think that the process of bonding it and the cutting, I don't, you know, I think it would be troublesome. I think it would be tedious, right? Uh, all right, is the Venture quiet? So the Venture, uh, no, I wouldn't say that it's quieter than the other crickets. In fact, because of the angle of the cricket, it has the vacuum system in the back to keep the material in place so that it can be at an angle. And that vacuum system has a whir, it has a sound. So it sounds different than a Cricut Maker or Explorer does. Um, it's not like obnoxiously loud or anything like that, but it's, there's like a, the, you know, the hiss of air and a hum as it's working. I, I played it, that sound for you in the video, so. Does it have secret compartments for bacon, chocolate, and beef turkey? It does not have any secret compartments that I know of, unless you count these on this on this docking stand, which I've definitely put things into. As I'm working with them, I will put I will put mats in here. I will put mat covers in here. I will put I have put some tools in here just to keep them from falling on the floor or whatever. So, but is it a secret compartment? No, there's no secret compartments on this. On the back here. And this is for the stand, right? It has, um, the, there's bars, I don't know if you can see those. This is the bars for, for you to place your roll onto. You know, so I stick stuff back here. <laughs> I totally do that. Um, I've got my power cord tucked back here. One of the um, support arm brackets is back here as well. I don't think that counts though. <laughs> All right, um, Evans asks if it can write yes. Greg, would you be willing to go get our big poster so I can show them? It's a big poster that's written in marker and it's got the bear on it. And it was our, our Cricut Pens and Markers project. So for Merry Maker Mingle, we did a Cricut Pen and Marker project where we showed you how to use pens and markers. We did some cards and then we did a mug and then we did a poster, a big poster using permanent markers. So Greg is gonna go look for that and see if he can find it. But yes, you can use a pen. It goes right in here. So it comes with an adapter, which is currently not in my venture right now because I took it out to do that project. So with the vent, with the adapter in, you can use all the same pens and markers that the Explorer and the Maker can use. If you take the adapter out, it just pops right out. You can use the new 2.5 millimeter Cricut permanent markers, which are really cool. So if you can find that, we'll, I'll show that to you. Kristen says, does it need to be cleaned because it is more open versus the other Cricut machines? I don't think that's the reason why it needs to be cleaned. Nope, I think it's because of the speed. It's like it's like a performance machine, right? So it's, so I, I, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm just guessing, but I've always felt that the reason that they want you to clean these is because you can get, um, stuff trapped into the, the little crevices more easily, but it is possible. Like my understanding is that it comes from using it. It's not just dust or something like that, right? And after all, they want you to clean it um, every 100 cutting hours, um, not just, you know, every year or every month or something. So it's related to using your venture, not just because it's more open. Uh, Tammy says, is the stand sold separately? Yes. This docking stand, which is what it's on, is um, the Cricut Venture docking stand, and they sell it separately, or you can purchase it as a bundle with the Venture and the docking stand. Let me put the link up.
because there's a lot of information about the Cricut Venture and where to find the things like those performance blades and the, and the stand, you will find at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash venture. Um, so it'll all be there. Facts that I, I'm not so good at remembering off the top of my head, you will find there. Okay, um, let's see here. <laughs> seeing a question about uh, snack storage. <laughs> let's see. Oh yes, Kara remembers the bear poster. It is super cute. I'm hoping that we can find it to show you. Uh, let's see. Um, is there a cover for it? No, there is no cover for it. You could just, of course, make one. That would be really cool. Uh, I don't know that it necessarily needs a cover, but there there isn't a cover for it, right? But you could make one. That would be fun. Uh, okay. Am I missing any questions? I think it'd be really fun to make a cover. Okay. Uh, do the Venture blades have to be the exact same blades for this machine, unlike other models? So th this blade is different than the Explore and Maker blades. It is a performance blade and it's, I don't know the exact, exactly what's different about it. So I'm a, I, I hesitate to tell you that it's like stronger or better engineered, but I do know that it is improved or st strengthened in some way to stand up to the speed of the venture. The venture is very, very fast. So that's putting more stress and torsion on the blade. And so they have, up, they've done something to the blade that's different. They said that, Cricut says that you could still use the fine point blade from the makers and explorers just to know that it won't probably last as long, right? It'll break or something or Good, too dull or I don't know, something like that. All right. Would you recommend this for the crafter that crafts in spurts or for someone that is in a business or crafts daily? I think it actually, I would recommend it for the crafter who needs something like this. And it's not necessarily based on how often you use it. So I'm the kind of person that likes to craft based on need. Right, so I get an idea for a project and then I wanna make it. And then I think, well, what tools do I have to make this? What tools do I need? So if I never need to make anything really big, I'm never gonna need the Cricut Venture. It's just that, it's that simple. Um, and I don't craft as a business, like I don't like make things to sell. So that's also not gonna be a need. However, I do get crazy ideas to do awesome outlandish stuff <laughs> that's definitely bigger than life. And in that case, the Cricut Venture would suit my, would, would fill a need. So if you have a need to either do big stuff, like a need, or you have a need to do a bunch of stuff faster because you have a small business, those are the two reasons I think that you would need this. So it's not necessarily how frequently, like I could be, I'm not, but I could be a person who makes one amazing project a month or once every six months. And if this is the machine that makes it for me, this is the machine I'm gonna want, right? <laughs> it doesn't mean that, just because I only do that one amazing thing every, you know, infrequently, it doesn't mean that it's bad. Um, so I think it's, it depends on what you would need it for, you know? Glenna says, what is the thing under the stand for? To cut stray pieces. These are catch bins. There's one on the front and there's one in the back. I'll try to pull that one out so you can kind of see that. And there for when the vinyl goes through. So the vinyl rolls through and if it's a really long project, it'll drop down and it might get onto your floor and get all dusty or whatever. So it can go into the bins instead. Same thing in the back, you know, so as it, as it moves backward and forward, like it's not gonna just wrap around the roll when it goes back, it's gonna go out the back. So if you have a catch bin, then it doesn't fall on the floor. So that's what it's for, which I think is pretty cool. It's a great idea. Cricut is really good at engineering awesome things. They really are. They are a leader in this industry and we see lots of knockoffs of Cricut pro project, products. Um, but they are the innovators and they are the leaders. And that's a really important thing for all of us because without that, uh, we don't get cool stuff. 
<laughs> everyone else is just copying them basically not everyone there's certainly some people who are innovating i'm not trying to say that cricket is the only one innovating but they are the biggest innovators in this space for sure so and i've always been really impressed with their product design it's very they, they put a lot of thought into it all right are there images in design space that will only work on the venture I don't think so. I don't think there's venture only projects because everything can be resized, right? You don't like you could like it might appear in design space as a super big project, but I don't know that it, there is anything like that. No. So, uh, yeah, so you could just size it up or size it down as you need to. Uh, does it measure the vinyl like the maker? Lisa asks. Yes, it does. So it will pull the vinyl to, in to, me to measure and make sure you actually have enough before it cuts it. And then you discover that your vinyl project is messed up because you didn't have enough. I consider that a plus. So yes, it does measure just like the maker does, does where it pulls it all in first to measure it. Okay, uh, Laura says, can I just put it on a table? Yes, you absolutely can. You don't have to have it on the stand at all. Cricut imagines that a lot of people are just gonna like have it on the edge of a table, right? So you can just have it right on the edge of a table because of this 45 degree slant, you don't. I just really like the docking stand. It's really, it's really cool. All right, I don't think we're locating our poster. Oh, it's like around here somewhere. Um, it's very big, so it probably got put somewhere uh, in our storage room. That's unusual. <laughs> but I could show you a picture of it. I think that's what I'll do. And it's in the video, so you don't, you don't need me to show it to you. So let me bring up a picture of it because it is really cool. We just did it just a few weeks ago. Let's see here. I have a lot of pen and marker projects. <laughs> hmm... Let's see, it had some cute bears in it. I think it's this one, let's see. Yes, okay, I found it. Let me show it to you. See, this bear, this is huge, it's a big poster, and we drew it on the Cricut Maker using the big 2.5 millimeter uh, uh, markers. Isn't it cute? So these, everything you see in this picture are all drawing, are all pen designs. So you know, you can totally make these on any Cricut that does drawing, but we made one just for the venture and it's really cool. And it looks like this. Find someone that helps you reach bigger heights. All right, well, I am gonna wrap this up. If I missed your question, uh, I'm sorry, just leave your question below this video or ask in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters, where you can get help and advice from hundreds of thousands of Cricut Crafters just like you. If you also want to learn how to set up your Cricut Joy, Joy Extra, Explore Air 2, Explore 3, Original Maker, or Maker 3, I have lessons on those cutting machines too. You can get links to those classes at CricutKickoff.com. Tomorrow I'll be back for lesson two and I'll show you all of the necessary materials and supplies that you may use for your Cricut adventure. That will be the second lesson of the day tomorrow. We'll be combining it with the Explore because the Explore and the Venture are essentially very similar. This is just bigger, <laughs> right? But it uses the same basic tools and everything like that. So until next time in our next class, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.